Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat, and I always excel. Uh, and here we are with our lesson on entering data and getting totals, which will just be the sort of first basic lesson here in using Excel in our course. So let's get into it. All right, so we suggest uh, we're a bit of a slow talker, so make sure you increase the play speed of this video to 1.5 or even 1.75. So what you can do is you can go to the uh, tools cog on the YouTube player bar, this guy right here, and on playback speed, click on that and put it on 1.5 or 1.75 and you'll find the video flows a lot better. Now, unlike other videos in our course, which are really long and involved, like with Access, we usually have a video timeline index. This one doesn't have a timeline index, okay? But you will need to make the play speed 1.5 times. So let's get into the lesson contents of what we're doing this lesson. Uh, we're gonna actually start using Excel and saving our work and making something. We'll look at the ribbon, tabs, rows, columns, and size zooming of our spreadsheet, how to change column widths, entering and editing text and numbers, how to add up values to get totals, and how to use the auto sum to add up a whole lot easier using kind of Excel's artificial intelligence. And also we'll make our sheets look nicer by adding some bold and some font color and a bit of paint bucket background. Okay, so we're really gonna get started this time and let's keep going and get into it. Now, a bit of a review from what we did in the intro lesson. This is what Excel looks like when you load it up. This is a typical spreadsheet and you can see things are organized vertically here going down in columns and across in rows, which have lines, okay? So the columns are identified by letters. This first column is column A. That's where all these item descriptions are. In column D over here, we've got the Wednesday uh, figures, sales figures, okay? So that's your columns. They're your vertical dividers. Then we have rows, and the rows are numbered down the side here. Now, in a particular location like this uh, banana cake sales of 20 on a Monday, it's located in this box here. Excel is the application of boxes, and that has a... Uh, a cell is what it's called. We don't call it a box, we call it a cell. And the particular cell location is called the cell reference. This one is located in column B and it's down at one, two, three, four, five, row number five. So that's at B5 would be its column reference. Uh, this Friday over here that's typed into this box or cell as we call it in Excel, that's in column F and it's down at row four. Because if we go to column F and count the boxes, one, two, three, four. So that's at F4 and this little corner uh, area here uh, tells us the cell reference uh, F4. So you don't have to kind of go across and count down manually or anything like that with your eyes. You can just be on a particular box with your green cursor and up in here it'll tell you the cell reference of where you are. All right, now they have a ribbon just like other uh, Windows applications and we'll talk about that shortly when we start up Excel. There's ribbon tabs you can click on to go to actually a whole different set of ribbons. So there's not just one ribbon here, there's many ribbons and they're underneath different tabs. And here's the cursor location, our green box here, which is called the cell pointer, but you can just call it a box cursor. That can be moved around the screen. At the moment it's here, which is in column C and down at row number seven going across. So you can see up here, it's put the cursor location as C7. And here we've got a formula and edit bar, which we'll be talking about in this lesson and showing you how to use. And down the bottom, we have sheet tabs where you can actually have several different sheets going all at once. Okay, mathematical formulas, you use the equal sign to start a maths formula in Excel, you can do addition, uh, subtraction, multiplying, and dividing. We'll be concentrating on addition in this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at all of these plus percentage. Okay, your formula that you've made appears in this bar. It has the cell references, the items you're doing. Here we're doing this item at B85, the 34 times, star is timesing in Excel, C85, C85 
is this one here. So it's working out 34 times 15 and you don't need a calculator. Excel will work out that that's 510 and put the result into that box where we've written the formula. Notice we always start with an equal sign. We're doing formulas, okay? So those mathematical operations. Today, we'll just be using the adding one but notice the easiest way to get them, you can get them from above the numbers on your keyboard here and use the shift key to go shift and the equal sign will give you a plus. But it's much easier to go to this right hand uh, corner of your keyboard. All keyboards usually in the right hand corner have your divided by your times and your star, your minus and your plusing. So we'll be using this big plusing key. And after you enter a formula, you always press right at the end of the formula, the enter key. So we'll be using this plus and enter here today in this lesson. And they're the easiest places to locate them uh, on the far right hand side of your keyboard. All right, so the exercise we're going to do our first office 365 spreadsheet is going to be Cyril Cyber Store and Cyril sells all sorts of computer bits and pieces on his eBay store Cyril Cyber Store so I've got power supplies graphics cards monitors and this is how many sold in June July August of each one there are our sales figures and September and here we've just added them up and got total so the total power supplies sold across June July August and September is one 55 and down the bottom here we've got the total sales for the month so we sold 662 items in June but then things got a lot busy around September because we've sold 819 items altogether so these bold figures here these dark black um, big ones they're going to be the ones we're going to learn to calculate in this lesson we're also going to learn how to make these little uh, underlined dashes and do a few other things as well in fact I think we've got a full list uh, coming up of all the things we need to do and here they are we'll start up a new blank workbook and save it use the snipping tool to place the work to be done out of this uh, PowerPoint onto the Excel sheet uh, and you could snip it from your video onto that uh, we'll talk about the screen the ribbons the tabs row magnifying workbooks and worksheets entering and editing text into those cell boxes changing the column widths to make things fit uh, change the font size and making things bold like we had all those totals of kind of a bold black color using this um, single quote and then minus signs to do some underlining inserting and deleting rows copy and pasting our underlines with control c then you go to the paste location you press enter it's a little bit different than the usual control c control v then we're going to learn the main things of this lesson adding up using a formula like equals and click on a cell plus another one plus another box and press the enter key but then we'll find a much easier way is using the auto sum artificial intelligence uh, which has been built into excel as a more recent thing and that's this kind of thing on the ribbon uh, with this greek sigma sigma symbol and it's called auto sum okay and it's in the editing section of the ribbon but we'll be learning that so they're all the steps we've got to go through in this lesson so we better keep moving along and get them done and that's what the finished spreadsheet is going to look like uh, for Cyril's and I'll just see what's on the next slide no that's our next exercise okay so we're doing Cyril's cyber store so what we need to do is let's just press escape so that we're not in presentation mode and you need to start up a tool called the snipping tool now I've already got it here on my uh, sort of what's this called the action pane or something but if you just type in snip snip it should get to this snipping tool so this comes with windows 10 very important thing we need to use now you start it up and it kind of looks like this now we want to do a new snip it's for cutting out something on your screen and getting a copy of it kind of like a screen grabber or a a selective print screen so you go new with the scissors okay and you start cutting out now if you mess it up like that we didn't get all of it just press new again all right so your screen will gray out and we're just going to this corner moving the mouse and then we're pushing down the button and holding down the button and we're just drawing a bit of a rectangle around that because that's the thing we want to make in Excel so we've got that in our snipping tool we'll just go through that one more time in case you didn't get it you can save your snip as a uh, PNG or JPEG too so we just started typing SNIP after we press the start uh, icon in the bottom bottom left hand corner we start up the snipping tool we go new on it 
uh, we push down our mouse button and just draw out and then let go of the mouse button and we'll have that item in the snipping tool. All right, so now we need to start up Excel. So if you just type EXCEL, you should have this as part of Office 365 and that's a version we're using. Now there is also a browser version you can use and make sure that you're using the downloaded version from your PC because it has everything in the ribbon all laid out. If you use that browser version, it is kind of the mobile version that you can use anywhere with your mobile Office 365, but it won't uh, have quite all the features and might be a little bit different to use uh, than this one. So we're assuming you've all got a laptop or a computer that you've downloaded on and you're using the downloaded version off your computer. All right, so we just always start with a blank notebook here and you can see here are the uh, previous things we've been working on. And if you want to uh, keep something, so if we want to, if say budget ski holiday wasn't finished, you can use this drawing pin to actually pin it and then it'll stay um, up the top here on your pinned items. So if you go to pinned, see we've pinned that. So you can kind of, uh, like they're the recent ones we've done. If we wanted to also keep the cake shop, because we want to do some more work on that, just pin it. And then you can go to your pinned items, this one, and get to those ones. So it's kind of like um, where you can save things and then you can unpin them. So you can have your own little list of uh, documents as well that stay there permanently. But we're just doing a new blank workbook. So we're clicking this one, blank workbook. And here it is. So we have the familiar kind of uh, office-y type things. Because if we go back to PowerPoint here, see we've got a ribbon and you know, when you click different tabs on the ribbon, you've got different things. So you can insert a picture, uh, insert some arrow shapes or whatever you need from there sort of thing. Uh, and that ribbon changes as we go to all of the different tabs. And most of our work's done on the home tab. So this is all the same and you can save with this save button up here. We recommend you turn auto save off on these applications. So we've got all that kind of stuff here and that's all familiar territory, so that's okay. And if you go to the insert one, you have got pictures and you can insert your old arrows and shapes and things like that. So a lot of it's the same. Uh, we're gonna be doing 90% of our work here right on the home tab. So make sure in the home tab. And here we've got all the boxes that we can type into. So let's just click on a box at random and just type passy in there. Let's spell it properly. Oh, we put caps lock on. Oh, well, there we go. So we've typed that into that box. And if we want to know what is that box, it's in column E. It's actually E6. It tells us that up here. And there it is. And you can bold it using this bolder. We can use the font to make it bigger. We can uh, make it a different color with this letter A. You can paint bucket it in as well like that. And that's all good. Now see how it doesn't quite fit now that we've made it bigger. What you can do is you can go up the top here and you just hover, move your mouse without pressing the button and you'll get these double arrows. Now you can drag manually and let go, but what is a nice neat little trick is if you get those double arrows and then double click your mouse, Excel will automatically make it the right width, okay? Now we wanna go backwards. So you can use, hold down the CTRL key and go Z and you should be able to go back lots of steps. And so you can see there, we've gone right back to the start using control Z, all right? Uh, so that's that. Now, here we've got all the different things we can do. And often you have more options with this little arrow here. So not everything fits in the ribbon. So see this little arrow here, if we click that, we've got more options for formatting cells. Like you can make the text um, crossed out by using strike through and you can set subscripts and superscripts, okay? So there is always these little things here down the corner which you can click to get extra items, all right? But the main ones will be in here. And I think that's everything we need to know about the ribbon. Now our boxes are kind of small and we've got a lot of them there, a lot more than we need. Uh, you can change the view size so we can go to view and zoom. And there's sort of set ones you can do. So you can make it 200% and say, okay. And that kind of makes it really big. Ah, we can do view oh, and go to zoom again. Let's just set it back to 100%. You can also do custom. So you might think, oh, well, I probably wanted about 120%, a bit bigger than usual, all right? And then it's like that. Uh, 
So that's one way, the view tab, and we'll just go back to the home tab here. The easiest way I find is down the bottom right hand corner, there's a slider and you can just slide this, uh, push down your mouse and grab it and slide it. And that can make things bigger and smaller and so on. So we'll just make it a little bit bigger uh, so it's easier to see in the video. And there we go. Now this rectangular box, you can move it with your arrow keys. And if you're typing things, uh, you can move it with the tab key as well, but we'll do that in a minute. Now let's get back to the one we want to make. What do we want to do this lesson? Because we better get a move on here. Uh, we had our snipping tool and we copied it in. Now you go edit copy. And so whatever you need to make, just get it off. Uh, you'll be getting it off the video screen, pause the video and snip the screen. And then you can go into Excel and just go over here and just go right click and paste. All right, and that'll put it in there. Now we'll just have to uh, change its size by grabbing its corners a bit, because it's a bit big. So we need to go across to A, B, C, D, E, F, and we're typing in this. So on row number two, we've got Cyril Cyber Store. So let's get that typed in, all right? So we've got Cyril's Cyber Store. Now it's going over the edge of the box, but don't worry about that. Um, items. Item sales totals. Okay, so that was in number two and that's where ours is. And you can see that uh, it's actually located in A2 because if we go up here to the edit bar, we can see all the things. Now, say we didn't want that apostrophe in the name, we could just go up and edit it here because the trouble is if you edit it in here, you can't unless you double click, all right? Because otherwise you'll just erase everything that's in there. So if you need to make um, little changes, editing, uh, we find it's best to do them up here, okay? And in the edit bar, but you can double click here and do them there. And then when you click off it somewhere else, uh, that's done the change. Now we need our item, that's the next thing, that's at number four. So go to number four here and type item. And then we need to have our June, our July, and so on. And I've just hit page down, I think, accidentally. Uh, right, but we'll finish all those off in a minute and let's get our first uh, thing here. See this underline with the minus signs? If you go to five and you just press the minus sign to do your underlining and then press enter, you get an error because Excel thinks that you're trying to do a whole bunch of subtractions, a zillion subtractions one after each other, and it doesn't like that. So the correction, I'll even tell you the correction is to put a single quote mark in front. So let's just say we want to accept the correction and that'll correct it for us, okay? But what the go is, is to type a single quote mark, if you can see it up there, this guy here, the single quote mark. Now that is located right next to your enter key, there's single quotes and double quotes. So we put a single quote mark in um, front there and then that's good, all right? Now let's get our first item in at row six here, power supplies. Now you can see that doesn't fit. Um, column A isn't wide enough. On this example, column A is a lot wider. Now how you make the columns wider is you go up the top and see how you get these double arrows here. Uh, you can push down your mouse and just stretch uh, until that's a bit bigger. And you can see they've taken it out to about the end of where the word store is there. That's about how wide it is. Okay, so we'll do the same on ours and take it to there. And then we should have enough room uh, to fit all the things in and we can put graphics cards and so on. Now we won't type all of this in. What we'll do is we'll pause the video and you can type yours in and we'll type ours in. Now here we're just doing numbers uh, like 25, 30, then we're gonna need uh, 52 and 48. Now notice automatically the numbers are pushed over to the right hand side, okay? Uh, and that's so they line up better. Now. These things here, if you want them to line up better, let's get August in as well. And September. All right, now September, you can see spilled a bit over the edge. So we'll go up the top and get those double lines, push down the mouse and just make that a little bit wider. Now, if you want these to line up better, uh, what you can do is you can go on each one and see up in here, there's alignment. 
This one will push it over to the right. So if you click on that, it's going to go over to the right. Do this one, click on the over to the right, align right, and just do them all with align right like that. And then that might look better because the numbers are going to be underneath them. All right. So anyway, we'll get all this typed in and you do the same. So we're just trying to get, don't put the totals in yet. Uh, just put all these figures in because we're going to calculate the totals. And uh, yeah, just pause the video here. Okay, make sure you got a copy of that to work on. Do it in your own Excel and we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so here we are and we've just about got it finished. But see how these, um, these dashed lines here, this one, this dash, dash it. This line isn't long enough. What you can do is you can copy this. So we'll just go down to this line here. And what you can do is do you right click and copy, which is the second one from the top, or do control C. Now notice that's flashing of kind of ants walking around in a circle is what it's called. Uh, what you do is you go up to this one and click on it with your mouse. And then rather than doing control V, you just press enter, okay, to copy. So that's how we copy things. So let's say this one here, let's knock a few things out there. So let's say this one wasn't right. And we thought, well, this one here is the right length that we want. So let's copy this one. Uh, when you look at it, when you clicked in there, right, there's nothing in the edit bar up the top. It's actually in located in A15. That's where the whole big line is and it's overflowed into these other cells or other boxes. So I want to copy that. So we're just going to do control C this time. Hold down the CTRL key with your left finger and press the letter C to copy it. Notice it started uh, being highlighted there with the ants moving around and then just go down to here where you want it and then you press the enter key. Okay, so that's how we do copy and paste. It's a matter of uh, if we wanted to copy that 213, it's control C and then it's highlighted. Then you just go to wherever you want to copy it to and go um, enter, press the enter key and it copy straight in. Now we don't want that there. So to clear it out, if there's things you don't want, you can just go, uh, let's see, we go right click and clear contents. All right. And that clears that box out. Okay. So say we didn't want those, those are all wrong. You can actually hold down your mouse button and color them all in and you can go, uh, well, let's copy them first. You can go copy. So we can copy a whole block of items too. So if we go over to here where the item is going to start and press enter, see how we copied that whole block of items. Now we don't want to actually want them. So what we can do is we can just push down our mouse and color them all into highlight them, then right click and go clear contents. All right. And that will take them out. Ah, oh, so many things here. Now down the bottom, we forgot to mention down the very bottom, this is the worksheet name. So we can uh, double click on that and rename it. So we'll just call that Cyril's. So that's another thing you can do. And we spelt it wrong. So we can go down and carefully double click in there and edit that. So that's all good. Now we better save it this work we've done. So you go file and you can do your usual save as and we'll just go into this folder, which you've already got, but you could also just go to your PC, double click, go to your PC. Um, then let's go through that all again. All right. So use this arrow to go back. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go file and we're going to save as, and then we're going to double click this PC and then it'll give us all our folders and stuff. All right. So go to this bit here, arrow, We've got a drive here where we can save things. You can also save this to a OneDrive in the cloud. That'd be fine. So into our Excel course, lesson one totals, and let's just call this one. Um, uh, let's call this Cyril shop. All right. So that's saved in there now and that's all good. Now, now that has been saved once in that location, you can just use this uh, save icon up here. And like we said, turn auto save off. We recommend you just do the saving yourself like that. Ah, right. So everything's in and these need to be bolded. So we just go up there and we go to our B for bold while we're on the home tab and bold that up. Monthly totals was also supposed to be bolded. So we bold that up. Now it doesn't quite fit. So we might have to just uh, double click on there 
and it's made it super big to fit the lines. Oh, that's interesting. So we better go over here with our mouse. When we get the double arrows on that boundary, just push down and we better drag this right back. All we wanted to do is make the totals a bit bigger. All right, so that's good. Now, how do we do totals? Okay, well, we need to add up the power supplies. We've got to add up June, July, August, September, all right? If you need to take a break, um, just pause the video and take a break now and come back because we've got everything typed in. We've worked out how to edit spreadsheets and now we're just going to uh, do the totals except on the heading, uh, the heading, the heading, the heading. There is something we have to do on that. We're going to do some merge cells. Uh, what we can do with this is see how it's going into all these different boxes. We can actually hold down the mouse and color in all those boxes and then you can hit this merge and center and that'll join all the boxes up and put this in the middle of the page. A little bit different to what it did there. Then we can bold it up and we might make that a bit bigger as well. Uh, maybe size 14. Okay, so that's that. Now if we don't like it in the middle you can hit this, this one up here, alignment, and that pushes everything to the left. See it says align left. That pushes it over there. That goes to the right, which doesn't look so good. That's in the middle. Uh, let's just put it to the left like it was in the example. And there we go. So that's it. So take a break and then we'll do the totals. Okay, I hope you've been watching this at 1.5 speed because we're going 25 minutes. We need to get a wiggle on. Ah, uh, Now to do the totals, we need to add up for power supplies, this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy. Now they're in different boxes. This box here, if we click in it, Excel tells us it's in B6. That one's in C6, that's D6, and this one is in E6. So we need to add together our B6 um, plus our C6 plus this. Now, it's a lot easier than that. We don't actually have to do that much stuff. What we do is, we this is where we want the answer. So go in the box where you want the answer. And the first thing to do is press the equal sign, which is next to backspace, the equals key, because you have to press equals first right equals has got to be done first to tell excel you're doing arithmetic and then it's we can just do pick and click so we just click in that and excel works for us okay you want to take b6 and we want to add on the next guy so what you do is you press the plus sign on the far right hand side of your keyboard remember we showed you that earlier in the lesson that you can go to the far right hand side where it's got your plus equals star and all that stuff then we click in the next one pick and click then we hit the plus sign on our keyboard. Then we pick the next one. Then we hit the plus sign and then we pick this one. And that's our last one. Now what happens if we, whoops, press plus, it's okay. You can just go up to this top line here, the edit bar and take that off. Cause we just want to add those four things together like that. We have an equal sign to tell Excel we're doing maths. All right. Because if you don't have that equal sign, what happens is, it's just going to put that in the formula okay what exactly what you typed in just like when you typed in power supplies so that's got to have the equal sign and you can just click on it and go up to the formula bar and put the equal sign back in and then uh all we have to do is press enter the enter key and that's done that's 155 and let's use bold to bold it okay let's do the next one so the common mistake is to get onto the first one you want to add up and then press equals. But remember, you need to start off in the answer box, okay? And we're in the answer box and we press equals to tell Excel we want to do some arithmetic. And what we want to do is click on this first one. We want to take 32, then click the plus sign on your computer, click the 28, click the plus sign, click the 46, click the plus sign, click 62. Don't click the plus sign because we're finished. Instead, press the enter key, okay? And that will work it out and we'll just bold that. Now, if we want to um, pre-bold all of these so they're bolded already, you can just color them in by holding down the mouse and press B and then they're all gonna come out bolded. All right, let's do the next one. We go equals, then we go click, plus, click, plus, click, plus, click, plus. Oops, we weren't supposed to do a plus, go up the top backspace it to get rid of it and press the enter key. All right, so it gets very easy. Equal sign, click, plus, click, plus, click, plus, click, enter. All right, so you can finish those off and we'll just 
pause the video. Uh, finish them all off except for the last one. Don't do the last one, all right? Okay, so welcome back. And we didn't do the last one. We're going to do the last one a different way. You could do your equals click plus, click plus, click plus, click plus. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, guy up here, auto sum. So over in the ribbon on the far right hand side, uh, near where I'm talking here, auto sum. Now, if you're in your answer box, remember you've always got to start in the answer box. And for this one, we do not press equals first. So do not press equals first. Just go straight to auto sum, which is for summing or adding things up and just click it. And what auto sums worked out is, is it's going to add up all of those guys, okay? Which isn't exactly what we wanted. Um, we want something else. So what you do is you just click here. And then if you hold down your mouse and stretch it, they're the things we want to sum together. And Excel writes this little formula, equals sum, and it's saying sum or add everything up between B14 and E14. Okay, so that's but this number to this number, anything that's in there, add it all up and you press enter and it'll do the total. So all of these ones here, I'm just going to backspace over them. And we're just going to show you auto sum, which is the much easier way of doing it. Uh, right, so we're in this box, you press the auto sum. And Excel, okay, it's figuring out to do verticals. So we've got to change it. Click in the 87 and tell it you want to do those horizontals, color those in, okay? And here we do auto sum. Excel, see the artificial intelligence. It figured out, hey, this guy's done a couple of horizontal ones. I think he wants to do a cross summing. He doesn't want to use down summing. That's what I love about Excel, this AI that's been built in behind the scenes. And that's happening in a lot of applications these days. So it's working out, okay, sum from B11 to E11. So it's saying, take all these numbers that start at B11 just here and go across all the way to E11. Every number in there, add it up and sum it up and give us the answer and you press enter and you've got it. So they're all your totals. Now for the monthly totals, what we want to do is we want to add all those guys up there. Now we don't want to be doing like we could do equals, you know, click plus, click plus, click, whoops, click plus, click plus, click plus. But this is taking forever, right? Uh, and I've put a plus on the end, so I better backspace that off. Uh, we could do it that way, but look, that's way too hard. What we do is just get in the answer box. Remember, you've got to start in the answer box and go up to your auto sum in this top right hand corner. Click auto sum. Now, Excel, of course, has got the old thing. Oh, he's doing horizontal. Well, we're not. So you need to click in the 30 there. Okay, so it's flashing and then push and hold down your mouse and drag down that we want to add all these up, okay? They're the guys you want to add up. We don't want to add up the dotted line, just these guys, and press enter, okay? Now, what happens if that's wrong? Uh, what you can do is you can just go up the top and backspace and take it all away and press enter, all right? So what happens if we went to this answer box, did our auto sum, and we forgot the first one and we pressed enter and we thought, oh no, hang on, something's wrong. And you can see it's sort of Excel's actually doing that green triangle in the side to tell us something looks a bit wrong. That's Excel's little thing about, hey, this might be wrong. And it was wrong because we went from here to started here and we should have started here. So what we can do is we can just go to that and backspace to get rid of it. And Let's just get back in our answer box again onto auto sum. Auto sum hasn't got it right here. We need to start from there. So click in there so it's highlighted. Now push down your mouse button and hold it down. Color in everything you want to add up from C6 all the way down in column C to C14 there. It's done the formula for us. And that'll be your answer, okay? Now, if we click in this one, hopefully Excel is going to start figuring out. See, the AI's clicked in, but it's adding in the minus line as well. Uh, so we might have to just click up the top and drag so we don't get that and press enter. Now, uh, let's see how it goes this time. We click in the answer box and click on auto sum. Uh, it's still doing that. Okay, so we go up here and go down there and press enter. And our last one, the grand total of everything. All right, so go in your answer box, click auto sum, but it's summing across. 
okay we want to do down so you have to click in there and tell it no we want to do these guys here color them in and once you've got them all colored in this worked out f6 that one there down to f14 and this got all worked out for us so we press enter and there's our grand answer our grand total now this one we didn't actually show the grand total so let's just take that off actually because in the example one it wasn't showing that but these guys down the bottom all need to be bold so let's just bold them up bang and hit the save icon up the top here and we're done that is Cyril's store items Cyril can work out that September was his big sales month and his biggest selling item when we look down these totals here seems to be this 968 it's also a lot of portable storage a lot of uh, little mini hard drives plug-in hard drives and USB sticks okay so that's Cyril's done okay and that took quite a while it's going to be much longer less than we thought things are always so much longer ah well Anyway, this is very thorough course. You're going to learn everything. Now we're going to do something a bit more fancy. This one, this one's called Mandy's Merch Store and Mandy goes to festivals and sells merch. And so the festival starts on a Friday, sort of Friday night, then Saturday night, then Sunday it sort of finishes and everyone packs up and goes home before Sunday night. Uh, so she's not selling now. She sold umbrellas and ponchos. It must have rained on Friday night because she sell a lot of umbrellas and ponchos. But then thank goodness the weather cleared up she wasn't selling any here on Saturday and Sunday so it must have been nice and sunny and good again all right so let's get into this Mandy's Festival merch shop all right so we'll just uh, on the video you pause it start up that snipping tool and go new and we're just going to snip out this thing that we want here okay and we're going to go edit copy Oops, and over to our Excel. Now in our Excel, we've got um, Cyril stuff here. What we can do is see this plus down the bottom. We can start another sheet here, all right? And we'll just go across here and put Mandy's stuff in there. All right, and we'll just slide this to make it a bit bigger and put that in there. All right, so we've got Cyril's is still over on Cyril's, but we've actually clicked that plus sign and made another sheet. We can double click in there and this one's going to be called uh, Merch. All right, now we'll sort of start this and help you out. So you can see that Mandy's Festival uh, shop here. What do we got? We've got um, Mandy's Festival. So we've got to type that heading in number two. So let's do that. Mandy's Festival Merch shop okay now that looks like it's been made a lot larger made pink in color so what we've done there is if we just color that in you can get onto your color of the letters this a is what color the letters are so we can make them red easily enough but we sort of got that hot pink color how do we get that that's not one of the colors that's here are uh, you go to more colors and if you go to the standard it's actually this guy here uh, and we'll just say okay and then we've obviously made it a lot bigger uh, let's make it sort of about I don't know 22 big and let's fix up the spelling of festival okay so that's got that done then we've got uh, this then we have those dashed lines all right so you need to put your dash lines in now if you don't put the single quote first that's no drama because remember excel is going to tell you whoops you forgot to do something just say yes and that'll all be good then we've got our item and we've got now it looks like there's a space here right this is a common mistake the items just bigger because that a column's been extended so you can fit in belt buckles and glow sticks and all those things so we just got the top and make the a bigger and then we've got our friday oh, hopeless typing here friday saturday sunday and then we're doing some total so it's a lot like cyril's and you guys this is your challenge task and it shouldn't take you too long to do Oh. okay what the hell's wrong with my L Pfft. totals 
All right, now that dash line's a little bit long, so we've got to click on it and where it starts here and go up the top and just bring it back a bit. Okay, what it looks like it needs two more dashes on it. Doot, doot. There we go. Now, once it's the right line, remember you can go here to where it starts and just right click and go copy, and then it's flashing. Go down to this one here and press enter, and that'll copy that line. All right, then you need to do your t shirts and your singlets. Now, we won't do all of these, we'll just show you some stuff here because this one's got nice colors. So, what I've done there is for t shirts, see how it's that pink color. Uh, we've just gone, remember we got that pink color just before, so we use that same one and we make it bold by clicking the letter B. Singlets is going to be blue, caps is going to be pink. So let's just go on caps and do that and make that one. Now singlets, we're just using this standard blue here and making it bold. So using the letter A to make it blue, B to make it bold. Now how do we get these kind of um, different alternating backgrounds, which make it a lot easier to read? Because like when you get to thongs here, you can see, oh, that's the blue line and it's 848.21. Okay, it's just to help people read it better. Uh, what you do is you just hold uh, click in this one, push down your mouse, hold down your mouse to color those in. And then we're just using the paint bucket, but we're just using a really um, super light blue, uh, which I think is that one there. All right. And so this one here, we're also going down and click on the paint bucket and it does the same color. So we could kind of pre-do these if we wanted to. Um, so let's just do a few of them with that paint bucket blue. Now singlets is done in a light pink. So what you do is just hold down your mouse to color that row in where we're going. Go to the paint bucket. Now there isn't a light pink on here. So you're gonna to have to go more colors and we're kind of using something maybe, that's gonna to be too dark. That looks too dark. It must be this really, really light pink in here. All right, so yeah, that looks about right. So we can color in those ones there. Notice you, you lose the blocks. Um, the sort of edges of the cells don't show up anymore, uh, but that's it, T-shirts. And then we can just type in. So we've got zero and use the tab key. The tab key's above caps lock on the left-hand side. That automatically gets you to the next column. Because if you press the enter key, it goes down. Uh, we want to go across, so use your tab key. So when you're in 180, um, do tab to go to the next one, and that's 34. Or you can use the arrow key, the right arrow key uh, will do it as well. And then we've got like zero, use the arrow key, the right arrow key to move across. And it just saves you constantly clicking and picking with your mouse. Now these guys here, they all had to be that pink color, didn't they? So on the letters, we had that pink. And these guys all have to be blue. So you're going to have a bit of coloring in to do here. That'll be lots of fun. Uh, you don't have to use pink and blue. You could use different colors if you want. And remember your totals. If you go to auto sum up the top here, see XL's worked out. They're the guys you want to add together. Uh, so we just press enter and that'll give us our 214. Now, this is where the answer goes for adding up the singlet. So make sure you're in the answer box. Click your auto sum. It's done it for us. It's showing it's going to add those up. Beautiful. They're the ones we want. So just press the enter key and then that's all done. Uh, these guys are all going to be bolded. So we can just sort of go down the column and just make them all be pre-format them. Uh, and that's all looking good. Now we'll leave you to finish that off. That's what it's supposed to look like when it's finished. And then you will be um, really good at adding up and doing total. So let's jump back to the PowerPoint and finish off, hopefully. So anyway, that's Mandy's Festival Merch Shop with everything that she sold. Looks like she had a really good weekend there and a really good fun. And if you want to do one more, here's a challenge task. So you can type in this spreadsheet that's got uh, Jen's juice bar, I think it was from the intro lesson. Um, Talia, all these girls have worked different hours in the juice bar. We just want to add up the total hours that Talia did and the ones that Tiana did. So we want to do a cross adding up here and we want to do down adding up. Okay, so remember the AI will get a bit confused and you might have to um, click here, hit auto sum and it might want to do uh, kind of like a crossing and you'll have to click up here and then drag down to make it do the vertical 
the vertical ones, all right? So yeah, that'll be a good challenge task and then you will be a Jedi Master. You let me be the Jedi Master and always excel at Excel. And that'll all be good. Okay, so speaking of merch, if you want to get one of these fabulous I always excel at Excel shirts, because believe it or not, some people emailed me and they want to get the shirt. That They said, oh, where's your merch to get the Excel shirt? I actually get them off eBay. So if you just go to eBay and put Microsoft Excel t-shirt in, are very popular in France. So you can have a je toujours Excel, uh, the t-shirt um for men, fun, hot cadeau droll. What does that mean? It means uh, cadeau is gift. So it's an excellent top uh, gift and it's droll means funny. Okay, so there you are. You can see it right down here. So you either go from the UK or from France. That's where they are. Very popular. Love the Excel. They're all excelling at Excel at the moment. So yeah, you can get one of those on eBay if you want the merch. All right, so the next step. So the next step is to continue our course because in lesson two, we're going to do um, formatting. But this time we'll do some timesing, dividing, percenting. Uh, we won't just do adding up. We'll do all the arithmetic. And we'll do a bit more of that coloring in and, and uh, changing changing the background color of things and making the spreadsheets look really nice. So uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you get that lesson when it comes out and we'll see you in the next lesson.